Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Zombicide Army of the Dead by Cool Mini or Not. This is a one to six player game that takes mm, about an hour to play per scenario and is for ages 16 and up. And in the game Army of the Dead or Zombicide, you're going to be playing as one of the characters from the popular Netflix show Army of the Dead. A bunch of zombie killers that have to go into Las Vegas to rob a bank and escape with the loot, all while insidious means are behind the scenes doing unique things. Uh, it rhymed. Anyway, you're going to choose between one or two characters or more if you're playing with less players and you're going to infiltrate with six characters Las Vegas. Go around, complete your objectives, defeat the zombies, the lords, the bosses, and make it out in the time frame. Each mission and scenario is going to be different and more complex and the different mini objectives will change from game to game depending on the number of players and players playing the game. As you progress throughout the game it gets more challenging and the bosses start to upgrade and become a little bit more complex and difficult to beat. There's a few differences between this and Zombicide and it's been a long time since I played Zombicide so I'm not going to accurately recount the differences between the two so I'll probably stay away from that. Anyway let's get into the setup how to play, and of course, my review. To begin the setup for Zombicide, Army of the Dead, the first thing you do is determine the number of players playing the game. Additionally, you'll determine the scenario you are playing, and currently the first scenario is To the Rescue, which is what I have set up here. Once you've selected the scenario on the number of players playing, each player is going to select a number of characters. So if I have a four player game, I need six characters, two players are going to play two, and then the other two players or characters will choose one character each. So uh, if me and Callie are playing, we'll each get, I don't know, Lily and Scott, and she'll get Maria and Chambers, in which case our friends will get Bly, and the other person will get any one of the others, like Tanaka. Anyway, in the game, you're going to basically be setting up based on the scenario. And in the scenario, even before the rules, we'll explain the setup. You'll have a number of these tiles, large tiles that you'll set up and illustrate the city of Las Vegas or a portion of it as well as maybe elevators and the truck, et cetera, et cetera, some iconic things from the movie itself or the show. And then you're going to set up all of the different items. There are zombie sleepers that are going, going to be placed around the game board and a lot of the building spaces. There will be boss spawn locations. There will be zombie spawn locations, unique zombie spawn locations, as well as suitcases, which are objectives. Uh, depending on who's playing the game, you're going to be pulling out their specific objective cards, shuffling them up, and then choosing a number based on the number of players or the scenario. In this case, it says to pick two. So I pulled out randomly Scott Ward's and Maria's objectives, in which case you're going to be adding an objective token for Scott and Maria in the different objective zones, and they'll be secret hidden amongst the rest of them. And one will be that the player will have to reveal the token, immediately score 10 of these um, adrenaline points, and then it'll take up two inventory slots, and she has to end up with this and escape. Whereas Scott, if you hold this token, you're gonna get a bonus one die against abominations, the big bosses, but you also must kill Zeus. So now you have to kill Zeus and escape with one of the packages. In addition to the generic objective, which is in this one, go through the city, into the elevator, escape through it into uh, this little like upstairs kind of hotel area, gather the green and blue suitcase and place them into one of your slots or different player slots. And there's rules as to how many each player can hold and how many inventory spaces they have and then escape. Once you've set up all the different boards, all the different markers, objectives, spawners, and characters, as well as the exit and entrance areas, and the sound marker on the space while your characters start, then you're going to set up the characters, your specific character boards. Each player is going to have a specific character that's going to have their specific passive bonuses that they get as they upgrade their adrenaline, as well as their HP on the right hand side. Otherwise, it's the name of the character and the type of the character. And on the back side, it tells you the two different setups for the character. You can choose either for this character here, we have Maria Cruz. You can select a semi-automatic rifle and grenade or a semi-automatic rifle and an army knife. It also gives you kind of a special ability for each of these characters on the front when you get to a certain point in the game. And on the back, it describes these abilities and uh, their classes, like the mechanic is specifically useful in certain objectives. Like for instance, in this one, to get to the elevator, you have to have a mechanic in the maintenance bay while the elevator is being utilized or you can't get up. And there are other characters. There are characters that can quietly go through the shamblers as you move through the building areas because shamblers are not found outside, only inside the ones that are asleep and you can wake them up. Um, and then there's other characters that may have more HP or useful ability throughout the game. 
Each player is also going to get a colored marker, or markers I should say, and you'll be placing one at the very top left hand side of the left hand side track, and one on the right hand side up to the highest point of HP they start with. Select the other ones and place them in the slots on the left and right hand side of the top of your player board. They're not used for now. The adrenaline point markers should be at zero. You should have your starting weapons in either your backpack or your starting areas. And then you'll set aside everything else. You're gonna set aside your personal objectives face up to remember them, dice that you'll be using for fighting these zombies. Any of the specific items that you can gain in the game will be shuffled after taking out the starting items and placed somewhere within reach of all players. The rest of the tokens you won't need, you can throw them aside. And then you'll have your Zeus order cards, which are for your specific unique Zeus spawning locations. And then these guys here, the uh, alphas and shamblers and how many you're gonna be getting them when they spawn in the different areas. So you'll be using not only the Zeus orders, but also the zombicide order cards for spawning monsters during the second phase of the game. There are some specific abominations. These are like the bosses in the game. You'll actually set these aside. These will kind of spawn either from the deck or at a certain point in the game when it tells you to based on an objective. Okay, your survivors are set up. You have your players or your character or characters and you know what you need to do. The two personal objectives and the main objective written on the mission board here. Read the story of the game and begin. When playing Zombicide, pretty much all of them, I think there are two phases. Now, like I said, I don't remember the original ones, and there's a ton of new Zombicide, so I'll frankly be speaking about just Zombicide Army of the Dead. But in this game here, you have a player phase and you have a zombie phase. During the player phase, each of the characters are going to get their own set of actions. Three of them, in fact. If you have more than one character, you'll select one of them and do the other. And you can do them in, in order or whatever order that you want. And the next player will use their character or characters. And you'll go around and everybody will use three actions per character until all characters have used all three of their actions. Once all of the characters here have used all of their actions, then you're going to go ahead and go to the zombie phase. During the zombie phase, you're going to go ahead and activate zombies. Zombies will have a number of actions based on the character of the zombie, and there is actually an area in which they tell you, oh, right here, uh, on the back of this booklet here. It tells you targeting priority order, and it tells you the type of zombies there are. Shamblers, alphas, and abominations. The number of actions for each of them, the number of damage you have to meet in order to kill them, and it has to be all at once with an attack, or the amount of adrenaline that you're going to gain when you defeat them. Adrenaline is kind of a double-edged sword, and I'll explain that later. After you've activated the zombies, either one or two activations, depending on the zombie, and the activations are to either move or to attack, which I'll also explain in a second, then you are going to spawn zombies. Each of these spawning locations is going to trigger you to draw a card from the deck here, and based on the player with the highest amount of adrenaline is the color you're going to utilize to determine how many zombies pop out. Blue adrenaline is the highest among all characters, you'll use the blue number, which is in this case zero. Yellow is the highest. Well, the yellow number, which is also zero. And eventually they'll start climbing up. One, two, three, four. Some cards have more zombies than others. Some have less than others. It really just depends on the card that you draw. If you're spawning from the Zeus location, you're gonna actually draw a Zeus order deck. These guys actually do different things. This one here spawns two alphas and then activates all alphas in the Zeus order zone. And each different scenario has a different Zeus order area. This is a separate deck, which is only utilized for the different scenarios that have the Zeus order spawning location. Okay, you've activated all zombies, and then you've spawned all zombies. That's pretty much it. You'll do an end phase where the first player hands the first player token to the left, and another round begins, starting with the player action, followed by the zombie step. When you're playing, there are a number of actions, and the first action you can take is to move. You can move from one zone to another, and the zones are illustrated by these different areas on the game board. They're a little hard to see, but it's basically each area of an inside room is an area, each area blocked off by kind of a street section, is an area and so when you move you'll take your character from one space and move to the next the spaces are large because lots of zombies are going to spawn in this game so you need a lot of space to hold these zombies once you've moved that's an action and if you want you can take that action three times or you can split them up with the other actions move 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 your turn is over the next action that you can take is you can search the only way you can search, however, if you go into a building area, it must be a building area, and it must be a space with no zombies or sleeping zombies. No zombies are there, spend an action, draw a card from the item deck. Oh, I got a ring saw, nice. Only sad thing is you can only search once for every turn for each character. So if you're playing with six characters, every turn or round, I should say, you get an opportunity to search one time for each of them, which is not often likely, actually. Sometimes maybe you'll get two or three if you're lucky or four if you're really lucky. The next action that you can take is you can reorganize. 
To reorganize, you can take any character items that you have equipped, like an automatic rifle or an army knife, and you can switch them around with cards in your inventory. You have three inventory slots up here, which fits in this player board here, which is actually really nice. Moving the kit to your area if you need to, um, or a ring saw, etc., etc. A lot of items that are unique items that can be kind of used only once can actually stay in your backpack, like this med kit. Discard to heal all your wounds, and you can use it in your own backpack. That's actually really nice. You can also trade with players. If they're in the same location as you, you can give them items, they can give you items freely. There's an interchangeable exchange system that you can do whatever you want when it comes to trading whatever you have on you with another player. The only rule with equipping is you only have two slots and they're gonna fit in these areas here. Some items might say they are double-handed or they require two inventory slots, something like that. You'll just have to follow them based on what they say. But in general, you put in a slot and if it's in a slot that isn't your backpack, you can utilize it on your turn. The next thing you can do is combat. Uh, when combat happens, you're going to either determine if it's melee or if it's ranged combat. And based on the weapon you're going to be looking at, um, it'll tell you whether it's ranged or melee. Um, in most cases, if it's ranged, it's going to have a distance of, more, of one or higher, uh, whereas the melee is going to have a distance of zero, meaning it has to be in the space that you're in. You will uh, Designate if you are close enough, determine if the weapon has any sound that it's going to give off, roll a number of die, and then determine if that those die are higher than the number they need to hit. So this is a weapon, automatic rifle, that rolls two dice. It also requires a plus four to hit, so four or higher. I rolled two threes. Neither of these hit. I'm also going to need to roll a bullet die. When I roll the bullet die, it'll determine if the gun basically runs out of ammo. Whenever I roll this little no ammo symbol, I run out of ammo and this gun is going to have to be flipped over until I can use an ammo clip at some point to give it ammo once again. So you can actually use an item, lose it, and not get it again, or end up having to trash it because it's just an empty ammo gun in your space. Um, and then it will also tell you how much damage it does. This does one damage, so in order to kill something with two health, you'll have to actually designate one specific monster and roll both of your attacks at it. Ah, a five and a six on one monster that has two health, that's two damage to that monster and it dies. If you don't designate a specific monster, you actually do have to do them in a priority order of types. So I'll have to go from the shamblers to the alphas to the abominations and you designate your hits based on that. If I rolled three hits, I would destroy three shamblers. I wouldn't get to destroy an alpha, alpha and a shambler. You have to kind of mow them down in order. But with melee, you can hit whatever you want based on the damage that you roll. It's kind of nice, but you also have to be in melee. The uh, only difference between this and the melee is that the ones that, the weapons that make sound are gonna leave a sound mark, the sound marker in your area, and they can also run out of bullets. Whereas the melee, almost never run out of bullets, and also they do not typically make sound, except for things like the chainsaw or the buzzsaw. Uh, and you can constantly use them throughout the game. That is how attacks work, and you can do up to the three of those as well, either with monsters that are far from you with ranged weapons or melee weapons with monsters that are in your zone. The next thing that you can do is eliminate sleepers. Occasionally you're going to walk into a space through a door and there's going to be a sleeper area. Basically a bunch of sleeping zombies in the area that only wake up when you move too fast by them or they are near an another set of zombies that are already awake. In which case you can spend two actions to simply remove the sleepers. When you remove either zombies from combat or sleepers you're going to gain a number of adrenaline. With sleepers it'll be the number on the back of the sleeper token, in this case it's four. And with zombies, it'll be based on the zombie. Shamblers will give you one adrenaline. I believe sleeper or uh, alphas will give you two. And then abominations will give you five for all the survivors in the game, regardless of where the survivors are. And adrenaline is an, import is an important aspect of the game. As you crank up your adrenaline, you'll move from blue, yellow to red, which will give you additional passive abilities on your character, which you can actually put your little pegs and put them on. Bam, plus one action point. Bam, lucky. Bam, plus one damage to your ranged combat. And now you've got yourself loaded up. Sadly though, during the spawning session, you'll actually be drawing a spawning card and whatever character of all the characters in the game, like I said before, that have uh, the highest color, that's where you decide, that's what determines spawnings uh, are. So you wanna make sure that all characters are kind of in the same adrenaline area. Uh, the last few things you can do are, you can make noise, so if Bill over here makes noise with his chain gun and destroys a bunch of zombies because it's loud, the chain gun's really loud, you can actually 
kind of divert the zombie's attention to you by spending an action point, taking the noise marker and placing it on your space. The last thing you can do is nothing. Yes, an action that costs nothing or costs one to do nothing. If you have nothing to do, which in the beginning of the game you might have to do, you can simply do that. The only thing else to talk about is zombies. Zombies will move one space at a time, unless they say differently, depending on the zombies. Like for instance, alphas will move two and maybe the abominations will move even farther. Zombies are going to be attacking and when they do, they just simply do a damage if they're in range. So if a zombie has two actions and they're in a space, they'll move to the next space, bam, do a damage. And that's just how it works. Uh, and all zombies function the same way. Now movement with zombies is gonna be based on a few things. If they see survivors, they're going to go after the most survivors. Uh, if they see uh, two different survivors, it might be the survivor who has, makes the most noise or is the closest. Uh, if they don't see any survivors, they'll go towards the area that last made noise. And so you can kind of kite, as they say in video game terms, the zombies to areas on the game board away from your survivors. That way you can do things like group them up and then throw a piece of dynamite in there and blow them all up, which can help because in certain portions of the game, lots of zombies are going to spawn. With that being said, that's the main aspect of the game, taking your survivors, doing three actions each of the ones I discussed, then activating zombies, and then spawning them with the cards and passing. Checking to see what objectives you must complete. Like I explained with this one, it's gathering packages and completing these uh, personal objectives and then getting the hell out of there before it's too late. This game plays just like the movie and just like Zombicide, kind of all wrapped up into one. We'll talk about what I think about it now because I think you got a good idea of how to play Zombicide Army of the Dead. Zombicide Army of the Dead kicks things up into high gear. Uh, not only is this Zombicide, but it is also Army of the Dead. And uh, you can see the themes clearly ring true to this game. There are six characters that I have here just starting out with. Lily, Scott, Maria, Chambers, Bly, etc, etc. But there's also six other ones that I didn't even choose. With a total of 12 different characters to utilize two different starting setups, unique passives for each character, and unique specializations for each character as well. Some characters you'll need for certain missions, such as Ludwig, this guy is the safe cracker needed to get inside of the Las Vegas hotel and open the safe before extracting the money and leaving. Or maybe you're going to need a mechanic like Mariana Peters, who's going to be able to open elevators to allow players to pass from one elevator tunnel to an apartment building to gain the objective tokens that they need. Each character is utilized and useful in their own ways, and it rings true to the movie. I watched the movie twice now. In fact, I watched this again just to remind myself of the type of movie that it was and how closely it rings to this game. And I would say literally 100%. There are the shambler zombies that hide in the rooms that you have to walk past slowly. There's certain rules about you can kind of get through shamblers to a certain extent, but you have to roll a die. And if you roll a one, oh no, you flip over the marker and that summons a number of zombies to the space. Uh, but if you don't make noise and you roll anything but a one, you can move quietly through. If there's too many zombies, you have to fight them off. It costs extra actions. And if there's too many there and you don't have the actions to remove to escape, you have to actually blow them into smithereens with one of your weapons. All the weapons here are actually weapons from the movie. In fact, each of the characters also have their own unique weapons that are based on the movie and inserted into this game. And it rings beautifully with theme. You feel the theme and tension in this game. It feels like you're playing as part of the movie. I remember playing Zombicide quite a while ago, actually, even before I think I started the channel or shortly after. It was really close in that proximity and I remember I didn't like it that much. I felt it was a little too complex. I was just getting into games at the time and it kind of just felt like I was just moving around and kiting things and I got kind of bored with it. I think I played maybe two games in the course of five years and then it sat in my garage. Not to say that it wasn't popular because it certainly was um, and people did like zombie games at the time and zombie games kind of took a seat back for a while and I never really saw a lot of games with zombies in them and up until now, which I've seen more recently, I'm a big zombie fan. I like zombie board games. I'm glad they brought something back, especially with a theme like Army of the Dead, because I love that movie and I love this game. This game has that theme of the uh, movie, the Netflix show. It has the theme of Zombicide. It has rules that I like that I don't think were in the original game. I could be wrong. You could quote me in the comments, but 
In this game, you can actually pinpoint a monster and utilize your attacks on that monster to increase your attacks to defeat them. Before it was like you had to get really lucky with like a Molotov cocktail or a grenade to get rid of an abomination, one of these crazy monsters you normally could never kill and they just move around the board and hunt you down and consistently get you eventually if you don't escape. Now it feels like you're even stronger. You feel like instead of Ripley in Aliens 1, now you're Ripley in Aliens, the second movie. And I love that feeling of feeling like I'm super powerful, but as time progresses, it gets more difficult, the stakes increase, and eventually if you do not get out and escape in a reasonable amount of time, you're in trouble. Also, if one character pushes their adrenaline too far, the spawns start increasing, you need to all work together. This is a cooperative game. It's a hard game too. This is actually a very challenging game. If one player pushes too far and everybody else falls behind, you're in trouble in this game. In fact, you might as well start over if somebody pushes to yellow before anybody else has even killed a monster. And if they're in red and nobody's in yellow, you are done for. You will not win. This game definitely pushes you to be cooperative play well together, work well with others. Don't go off by yourself. You go off by yourself and a bunch of zombies spawn, you're dead, your character is done for, and your team is gonna be worse for it. In fact, some characters must escape alive, depending on the specific objectives. And if you get out, get yourself killed, the game's over, gotta rinse and repeat. Speaking of setting up, it's complicated. Each of the different setup scenarios requires the different tiles, up to eight of them, front and back, organizing them with the different numbers, number of spawn tokens, spawn markers, spaces for exits and entries, different areas for the elevators. And so if you don't like a complex setup game with a large table space or table presence, eh, not for you. But if you do, or you don't mind it at least, and you want something entrenched with theme, this is gonna be great. This feels like I was moving through Las Vegas. It reminds me of the movie. Each space reminds me of going to a certain portion of the movie, and they're based on the movie. Everything is based on this movie. The statue I remember, the different monsters I remember, the different shamblers and objectives, and each character in the movie having their own thing they want to do. This guy wants to bring the head of the monster to bring it to science. I don't want to explain this, I don't want to ruin the movie for you, but they're all very, very unique characters that have their own kind of goals and it shines through with each of the characters in each of the missions as well. Oh, I could gush. In fact, I will. I love the characters in this game. I love the quality. I love the fact that they included all the characters and more. I could be whoever I wanted from that show and they feel unique. I love the quality of the artwork. I love that the, everything about, about this game is easy to understand, minus the spaces. Uh, it's kind of hard originally to figure out what is a space and what isn't a space. But as you play and you get used to the scenario, you figure out pretty simply. After one playthrough of one scenario or mission, the next one you're gonna know what spaces go where. I love the fact that there is these Zeus order cards that are a little bit more challenging. And I love the fact that as the game progresses in certain ways, certain spaces will open up and allow you to spawn new zombies in new locations, progressing the game. I love the fact that this game is kind of a boulder rolling down a hill, but after, after it gets halfway down the hill, it picks up like four polar bears and a tiger. And <laughs> by that point in time, if you're not running really fast, you're in trouble. And it could be even possibly too late. And you can kind of feel the tension ramp really quickly. You'll feel a sigh of relief after you've blown up a huge horde of zombies. Then next round, there's 20 more on the board. In fact, it's likely you'll run into all of the zombies in the game, and there is a ton of different zombies, a ton of miniatures. Artwork, theme, quality, if you like Zombicide with some new enriching rules, at least from what I remember, being able to pinpoint things and defeat the bigger monsters, not necessarily easier, well, slightly easier, but more realistic. I can actually blow things up with my saw launcher, pick a specific thing and maw it down. And I'm also still scared for my own specific character. Yeah, character elimination kind of sucks, sitting out kind of sucks, work together as a team. Otherwise, they can tend to lead to some bad gameplay, which is partially the game's fault and mostly your fault. Overall, this is an excellent game. This is of the three Zombicide games I've played, yeah, three. This is by far my favorite. I'm keeping this one. In fact, I'm getting rid of the other two that I have in my garage because this is even going to be the one that I'm going to play whenever I want to play Zombicide, for sure. I love the movie. I love the game. If you like the movie, this is an instant pickup. If you like Zombicide, I haven't played Black Plague in some of the other ones. Those might be better. I've heard a lot of good things about them. I couldn't tell you for certain. Those are for the Zombicide fans out there who have played a lot of them. But I really did enjoy this one. So go ahead and decide for yourself if it's something you should pick up. Don't mind the table space and a beautiful looking game based on a great IP. Then Zombicide Army of the Dead is for you. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Army of the Dead Zombicide by Cool Mini or not. 
and the answer is yes, they are cool. If you'd like to pick up the game, there's a link down below in the description where you can go ahead and purchase Zombicide Army of the Dead. And if you'd like, if you think we've earned it, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button, the bell notification button. Sorry, it's been a while since I've reproduced, been, didn't produce a video in like five or six days. I had a baby that I've had to take care of. We just had our first baby, hooray! She's so cute. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And as always, I look forward to perusing the streets of, <laughs> of Nevada, or I should say Sin City, with you next time. But don't get eaten by zombies.